All right, let's get started here. Um, this is going to be the second video in my new M. Eugene Art Learns to Paint series. Uh, the first video in this series focused uh, strictly on the canvases that I use and um, what I've learned over the last nine months of painting um, that's uh, found me using the canvases that I currently use. Um, of course, what, what I have here um, is just a canvas panel, um, so it's nice for practicing. I, these are probably less than a dollar, but I use those a lot just to kind of try out new techniques that I'm gonna maybe use in a, in a painting um, or just kind of poke around with smaller paintings uh, if I maybe don't have time for a larger canvas. Um, but they're real nice if you're thinking about getting into painting um, to start with. Uh, you can get a pack of like 25 um, for $20, $25. So uh, it's pretty economical. Um, so what we're going to talk about in this video is just the different paints that I use. Um, now, I pretty much stick with Golden Brand, but that's definitely not the only brand available. Um, I do use Dick Blick um, pretty much exclusively. As I've said in previous videos, I grew up close to where Dick Blick is from, so I'm just partial to their company. Um, but you can get Golden Brand paint from all different suppliers. So um, Golden Brand is, is pretty well known for having high quality paint. So um, I, I don't think you can go wrong with it, but I'm sure there's other companies that are um, equally as good. Uh, what you will find is uh, similar types of paint and paint colors amongst the different companies. So this should still hold true for the most part um, for other brands of paint as well. Um, the paint I use the absolute most is the heavy body paint. Um, comes in tubes if you get, I think this is up to five ounces and then you can get tubs of it. Um, I'm starting to switch to this just because I use some colors so much. Um, teal is one of my favorites. Uh, so I'm going to show you how um, the heavy body kind of acts. Um, so we'll just squirt a little bit out here. A lot of times people describe it as sort of buttery. Um, I think that's pretty fair. If you think of like a tub of margarine or something. Um, it's pretty thick. It kind of holds its shape there. What we'll do is get a palette knife here and we'll just kind of spread it down and you can kind of see what it looks like. Actually got a little too much there, but so that's the the type I use the most. But it covers up a pretty good amount there. Um, it's pretty thick. You can still see some lines here, um, which is kind of nice for texturing. Um, then you have the fluid acrylics. We'll just put a little bit out here. And what you can see here, so if you tip it up, it'll actually flow down a little bit. Now, I personally find this to be nice to um, use occasionally if you just want a, a thin consistency on something to, that's not going to um, leave a lot of texture. However, I have used it, I guess what I would call in a like a splatter technique. Um, where you might end up with it looking similar to that on a painting. And then of course it does leave that um, texture there. And you can actually mix it with the heavy body. Um, and you can see it's kind of turning green there. Um, so it's nice because you, you can still work it in with the other texture of paint. Um, and then you just come up with something in between. So it's a nice way to, to bridge the gap there. Um, and then we have your high flow, which is more like an ink. Um, we'll see here what, what that means. So it's going to flow most of the way down the canvas there. Um, now, I have not used this one a ton, but I do have aspirations to include it in more of my paintings. I have included it in some, um, for instance, the Bittersweet Blossoms. I used that. I was pretty happy with it. I'm going to squirt some water so you can kind of see what happens. It uh, just gives you some other options for things you can do with this paint. 
and that's kind of how I used it in that Bittersweet Blossoms painting, um, just to kind of give it some cool um, texture and um, look to the to the tree. Um, and then again, you can mix this with your other paints as well. Uh, now, so there's also um, iridescent paints. Um, these I know even less about. I got this really cool set um, here. I'll try to bring it into view so you can kind of see. Um, my wife got me this for Christmas. And again, I haven't used it a ton yet. It's more because I just kind of forget it's there. Um, but it wasn't a uh, super expensive set and you get a, a good variety of things. So you get a bunch of different colors um, to play around with. And I've used it in one painting so far. Um, admittedly, it took a lot of tinkering uh, just because I just didn't know how to use it. And I wouldn't say I necessarily do quite yet either. Um, so I have two options here. Um, you can see that little square there with the half white, half red. Um, that means it's more transparent than this next one I'll show you where the square is fully filled in. Um, I'll show you how it interacts with, I'm going to bring some heavy body white paint out. Um, see how it looks. I haven't used either of these colors, so I'll be interested to see what this looks like too. So, just get a little bit of white. Oftentimes it doesn't take much. A little bit of that blue in there um, so you can kind of see it just changed the shade of it a little bit um, it does have a little bit of a shimmer to it and then this one is the one that's more transparent so again just change the shade so if we're mixing it in with the paint of course you're still gonna get um, the whites gonna not be that transparent, but um, if you're just putting it over top of a dry paint, uh, that's where the transparency is going to make a bigger difference. So you can see how you can see through that to the underlying color, and that can be useful just to kind of um, add another layer to the painting that you're doing. Um, so that's kind of what I have learned about the paints I've used over the last year. Again, I use the heavy body more than anything else. I personally like to thin the heavy body out um, just because it allows it to go in with the brush a little easier. Uh, I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Um, even if I'm using a palette knife, I'll thin it out sometimes. Uh, just what I found is just coming straight out of the the tub it's it can be a little bit tricky to get exactly what you're hoping for um, not that I never do that but I, I found myself recently using it um, thinned out a little bit more uh, I just seem to like it better that way so it's just gonna spread easier versus if we get on here and pick this up it's just not quite the same look to it in my opinion so um again i'm just kind of learning as i go along so um, nine months in now maybe nine months from now i'll completely change what my opinion on that is but um that's all i got for today hopefully this video is helpful um, i hope some people that watch it will be thinking about getting into painting as well if so uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me all my contact information is on my website mugeneart.com or you can always just DM me on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Take care, everybody. We'll see you next week.